Hi everyone, I'm Lori Whitlock, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the free Silhouette Studio software to create beautiful word art. A lot of people don't know that you can download the software for free and use it to design printable projects. However, it's likely you'll enjoy the software so much that you'll want a cutting machine to go along with it at some point in time. When designing word art, it's nice to have plenty of fonts on hand to choose from. I've downloaded a set of fonts from fontbundles.net and I'm including the link in the description. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing that might be helpful is to take a look around at some word art that you find and that, that you like and just kind of analyze it and see how it's composed. You'll notice that there's um, a script font and a serif font and then kind of a handwritten font and then another script font and then the tag is in the handwritten font again. Notice that they've kind of limited the fonts within this selection to work together and not go too crazy with too many fonts. Same um, thing here. We've got a script font and a cute little handwritten font and then just a fun font with a little flourish. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these samples because we don't really need to pay too much attention to them um, as we're creating our own artwork, but they kind of give us a feel for how to how to compose things and make them work well together. So the next thing you need to do is choose your phrase that you're going to use. And we're going to use the phrase, it's the little things in life. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in on different lines. It, it's the, and then the next line is going to say little things. Oops, actually we're just going to use little on the next line. Little things is going to be too wide. So we'll put the next things in on another line and then our last line will say life okay and then I'm going to go ahead and center all of that align to the center this option here not this one because that would stack everything on top of each other this one will just align it right down the middle okay and I I'm using some fonts from a bundle that I bought and I'm going to go ahead, I already know which fonts I want them to be. Um, we're going to use the font Quintessa for this one. It's a cute script font. And Little, we're going to use Young Heart. Actually I want, there's two different versions. Yep, I want this first one here. It actually has some uh, little spaces in the letters that I like. And we're going to use Young Heart again, but we're, this time we're going to use the version that is filled in. And then Life, we're going to use a font called Biker. And we'll go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so these are the fonts that we're going to use. I'm going to show you how to make a cute little banner shape to put the things in inside of. So I'm going to move everything kind of off to the side for just a moment. Oops, I'm going to group it together so I can grab it and move it. Okay, so to make a quick banner, I'm just going to grab my draw rectangle tool. I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to double click the piece and grab the edit point bottom left corner here. And I'm going to just shift and arrow over to bring that in a little bit. Then I'm going to grab the whole piece and I'm going to go to my replicate window and I'm going to mirror it below. Then I'm going to take both pieces and mirror them to the right. You can see that we're forming a perfect banner piece this way. And then I'm going to go to my modify window and I'm going to click weld. And you can see that that welded it in the one direction, but obviously it's not quite close enough to, to get both of these top and bottom pieces welded. So I'm going to nudge the bottom one up one notch with my arrow key. And then I'll take both pieces and weld. And you'll see that that did actually weld them together. So I'm going to zoom out, and if your banner shape is a little different than mine, then that's fine. You can just grab the ends and, and do whatever you'd like with that to get it to the right size. So you can see that that's about right. I'm going to go to my fill window and fill it with none so that I can kind of get that size properly. Okay, we can see that that is looking pretty good. Okay, so um, the other thing I'm going to do is add a little ornament to the top and bottom. So I'm going to go grab an ornament. Um, it's the lowercase letter I, and the font is um, Young Heart Ornaments. So Young Heart, we'll click on that one, and you'll notice on the right-hand side you can choose Ornaments. Um, if you type other letters, 
um, you will get other characters. You don't actually have to go and get it out of the font book like glyphs like I showed you before. This is actually a character in the font. So I'm going to use this little ornament at the top and bottom of my artwork. But you'll notice that it's really skinny and fine. So if you're planning to cut this, I would suggest that you fatten it up just a little bit. Let me show you how I like to do that. Um, I'm going to go to my offset window. Uh, let's see, offset. And I'm going to do an external offset. Oops, I have to select it first. Choose an external offset. And I'm going to choose 0.01. And you can see that that offsets just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and move that offset away, get rid of my original piece, and I will use this one for my ornament at the top and the bottom. And we'll colorize it all here in just a moment. So I'm going to grab everything. Again, I'm going to press center as everything. Whoops, I have to ungroup first because I did. Well, no, I don't want to ungroup. That actually ungrouped those letters. Okay, so, yep. Um, apparently it's not grouped right now, so align center, but make sure yours is ungrouped, but don't ungroup to the point that the letters come apart from each other. So everything is aligned to the center. We'll go to replicate, and we're going to mirror it below, and then I'm using my shift and my arrow key to move the piece down, and I'll grab that top piece and move it a little bit closer, and you can see that our artwork is really coming together. Um, the one thing that we need to do with this piece right here is create um, an outline that um, is printable or cuttable. Right now it would just cut this banner shape and we don't want that. We want it to actually cut a little, basically a little line around it. So let's go ahead and go to our line options and we'll increase the thickness to like three points, maybe a little more. Let's go four points. And then if we go to our modify window, you can detach the lines, which will turn that piece of artwork, I'm trying to show you, into an outlined piece of artwork. So it would actually cut around all edges of that rather than cutting right down the middle. So that's, that's what we want. And if you're printing it out, it probably doesn't matter quite as much as if you're cutting it. So we'll align everything to the center again. Let's get our things in lined to the middle. That doesn't look quite right to me, so I'm gonna bring that down one notch. And I think our artwork looks perfect. Now let's just go ahead and colorize everything. We'll take that top one, and I'm gonna use my fill color window, and I'm gonna use the little picker tool. And I'm gonna select each area of my artwork and choose the color that I want it to be filled with. And I'll do the things in and the yellow again. I think that would look nice. And the outline here, we'll do that yellow. Life, let's do that in our pink. And we'll do our ornament in yellow. So we're pretty much done. Um, if you want to take a look at this without the red outlines, you can just go to your line color window and choose no line color. And your artwork is ready to print if you want to print it. First, the next thing I would do would be to group it. And you would set up your design page settings to 8.5 by 11. And sent, you know, center this on your piece of paper, and you could send this to print on your home printer. If you'd like to cut it out, you would choose everything and go to your cut settings and make sure um, that it's set to cut. You do, you will notice though, there is one thing we need to do if we're going to cut this. You'll notice that the script font overlaps. It's kind of hard to see in this mode, but um, you can see that it overlaps here. So what we need to do is ungroup. And we need to select these words and we'll need to weld them together. And I need to ungroup before it's going to let me do that. And then I can choose my little weld button. You can see that the little lines here where they overlap are now gone. They've welded into one cuttable piece. And I don't think we have that problem anywhere else in our artwork, but always double check that and make sure there's nothing overlapping because you don't want your vinyl to be cut apart um, in between your letters. So. Um, if you want to cut, you'd be ready to cut now. And if you want to do all the different colors, you would need to um, 
change each, se each section, you know, if you wanted to cut certain colors, you would need to change these parts to no cut that you don't want to cut with each pass, if that makes sense. And you're ready to go. So I hope you have a great day, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Bye-bye.